All right, in this video, we are going to take a look at equations of lines and planes in space. And this lecture goes along with section 2.5 of the OpenStax textbook, Calculus Volume 3. It's a rather lengthy section, so we're going to break it into two parts. In this first part, we're going to look at finding the equation of a line in three dimensions and finding the distance from a point to a line. So in three dimensions, there's two ways we can define our line. Uh, we can use a point and a vector, or we could use two points. Uh, and there's two ways that we can get the equations for this, so represent them. Uh, it could be a set of three parametric equations. And you have one equation uh, for each coordinate. So for rectangular coordinates, you have an x equation, a y equation, and a z equation. And each one of these equations is a linear equation for the variable t, which is the parameter. Uh, and the way I like to think about these, or remember them, uh, is to think of a linear equation of two variables. Everybody probably remembers the slope-intercept formula, y equals mx plus b. So, uh, x, your independent variable, is being replaced by the parameter t in each one of these. And the slope number, uh, m, is different for each of the directions. So it's a, b, and c, and these are the components of the vector. And the vector tells you which direction and sort of the tilt of the line. So it makes sense that the components of the vector are like the slope numbers in these equations. And uh, the last part, uh, the y-intercept, the constant that's added on there, uh, those are the coordinates of the point that you're using. So here they're x naught, y naught, and z naught. And those are the three coordinates of the point, uh, which is sort of your starting point for when the independent variable is 0, right? So when t is 0, you're at that point p. Uh, in the y equals mx plus b equation, when x is 0, you're at y equals b. So I think of uh, that format and helps me understand those three equations. Now, the same uh, line can be represented as one three-part equation, uh, and this is known as a symmetric version. So you have your parametric version and your symmetric version. Um, and you'll notice that t is not here. In fact, that's how you get from one equation to the other, is you take any, or you take all three of the per parametric equations and you solve for t. So we can do that with one of them. If I just solve this for t, uh, I would subtract the x naught, and then I would divide by a. And you can do the same thing for the others, and you'll get a similar equation. And all those equations are equal to t, so they're all equal to each other. And so you've eliminated the parameter uh, to get uh, just an equation with x, y, and z. So a, b, c, x naught, y naught, z naught are the same in both sets of equations. A quick concept check here to go from the parametric equations shown here at the top uh, to the equivalent symmetric equations, uh, A, B, C, or D. Take a minute to pause the video if you need some time. And uh, I believe the correct answer is answer choice D, uh, where you would just solve each of these equations for T, uh, and you should get uh, the fractions shown in answer choice D. And they're all equal to t, so they're all equal to each other. So the correct answer is d. Uh, now, this is the same symmetric equation of a line. Uh, see if you can identify from the choices here the vector that determines the direction for that line. And you should have found that uh, answer choice c is the correct answer. So remember, in this metric form of the equation of a line, it's those denominators that are the components of the vector, A, B, C. Right? And you see that here in this uh, definition. Uh, so 237. Now, A uh, could be correct if you use parentheses 
we're trying to avoid using parentheses for vectors because it's confusing because um, that's the notation for a point. So uh, we prefer to use the bracketed notation for vectors when describing vectors. So if you were given two points, uh, instead of given a vector and a point, and you wanted to get the equation, uh, you would simply take the two points and form a vector. Uh, the vector from initial point P to terminal point Q uh, is just going to be the difference between the coordinates. And you do a terminal point minus initial point for each coordinate. And I'll get you three coordinates. So that becomes your ABC, your components of your vector. And that would just go in the, symmetric, the parametric equations in front of T. And then you could use point P for your point or Q, either one. Here we're using point P. Uh, and since you can use either point, the parametric equations aren't unique. They can look different depending on which point you use, um, but should be equivalent. Now, if we have multiple lines, uh, we might want to know their relationship with each other. Uh, and we can have the lines either be parallel in which they don't cross and they have some set distance they are apart uh, or intersecting where they cross at a single point. Uh, perpendicular lines intersect and form right angles. That's a specific case of intersecting lines. Uh, but in three dimensions, there's another case, a third case uh, that's not parallel or intersecting and that's skew. And you can't have this in two dimensions and two dimensions lines are either parallel or they cross. Um, but here, if the lines are on parallel planes, uh, the lines aren't necessarily parallel, um, but they won't actually intersect because the planes don't intersect. This table here summarizes the connection between the vector and point uh, and whether they're parallel intersecting skew, or again, you could have them be the exact same line. So if the two lines are equal, then the equations should be equivalent. Maybe one is multiplied by a constant uh, in all the parts, then that would still be equivalent. Um, but it should be pretty obvious that they're equivalent. If they're not, uh, parallel would be the next easiest thing to spot. And what you're looking for there is that they have the same vector, right? So the direction vectors would be the same. And so the number for A, B, and C would be the same in both lines. And you see here, this uh, L1 line has the parametric equations using S as the parameter. So it's not always T, you can use a different letter. And then the symmetric equations uh, for the second line, L2, but you can still tell that A is six, B is negative two, and C is three. Um, and then if you look closer, you'll notice that the other numbers are different the numbers for x naught, y naught, and z naught, and therefore the lines are not equal, right? Because they don't have that same point. So there would be a, a case of parallel lines. And when you look at the intersecting and skew cases, it is difficult to know how to tell them apart. Uh, obviously, they have different values for a, b, and c, so that's how we know that the direction vectors are parallel. Um, but uh, telling whether they have a common point or not to see uh, if they're intersecting really involves uh, solving them as a set of equations. Uh, and so we'll see it in another exercise how to do that. So if, if there is a T value or S value, a value for the parameter uh, for which the two lines have the same coordinates, then they're gonna intersect at that point. If there is no such solution, then they're skew. So it's not gonna be immediately obvious just from looking at the equations. Uh, now we can make an infinite line into a finite line segment by just limiting the parameter uh, to a closed bounded interval. So instead of going for t being all real numbers, t goes from a to b, or for instance, from zero to one, uh, then that will give us a finite line segment. And uh, in particular, if t goes from zero to one and you use the setup we had from before, where you start at x naught, y naught, z naught, um, and then you use the vector from P to Q, uh, where Q is 
x1, y1, z1, uh, then that will give you the line segment from P to Q. Right, what about the distance from a point uh, to a line? So this is, of course, the straight line, uh, shortest distance. If you were to draw a straight line from the point to the line, it would be at a right angle to the line. And uh, in general, we won't be able to find this point P, uh, then it would be obvious how to find D. Uh, so the way we find the distance D instead is we just grab any point on the line P. And so if you have the equation of a line, you can easily grab a point from its equations. Uh, and we of course have a vector for the line. So we'll call that V. Uh, and we basically create this uh, parallelogram from the vector V that's on the line and then the vector that goes from the point P to the point M uh, that we're trying to find the distance between. Now, you want to remember that the cross product of two vectors uh, is equal to, uh, sorry, the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the area of a parallelogram. Uh, so you see in this picture here, we're looking at the parallelogram formed by vectors A and B. The magnitude of A cross B is the area of that parallelogram. Now, we didn't mention this before, but uh, the area of a parallelogram is equal to its base times its height. So it would be an H here. Um, and this should make sense because if uh, if I sort of shifted this back like that and sort of, and kept this fixed here, uh, then I would just have a rectangle, right? And we know rectangle the area is just length times width. Uh, in this case, you think of the length as the height and the width as B, the base. Uh, and so all you've done is kind of skew or push the top uh, of the rectangle to make it uh, kind of slanted and make it a parallelogram, but its area is still the same. So uh, area of a parallelogram is known to be the base times the height. And this is a parallelogram here, right? And so this is the parallelogram formed by the vector from P to M and the vector V, and that should be equal to the area of that parallelogram. And we know the area of the parallelogram is also equal to the base times the height. In this case, uh, the base is the magnitude of V and the height is that distance that we're trying to find. So uh, a lot of stuff here, but it, it basically is what we already know about the cross product uh, magnitude being equal to the area of the parallelogram, and then the well-known formula for the area of par parallelogram being its base times its height, and then just putting in V and D for those quantities, and then, of course, solving for D, which is what we wanted, by dividing by magnitude of V. And that'll bring you to this formula. So this is a formula we use to find the distance from a point to a line. We need to create a vector from any point on the line to the point not on the line. Uh, and then we want to take the cross product of that vector with the vector that's in the line, and then take the magnitude of that cross product and then divide by the magnitude of the vector in the line. And so say we had a point M and a line given by this equation. Uh, I think we will do this in the methodology. So using the line equation, no matter which setup you have, you should be able to find a point and a vector. Uh, then you need a vector going from the point in the line to the point off the line. Then you get the cross product of that vector we just created in step two uh, with the vector that's in the line. And then we find the magnitude of that cross product and divide by the magnitude of the vector in the line. So we'll see that uh, worked out in the methodology next. And that's it for part one. This presentation by Matthew Watts contains images and text from Calculus Volume 3 by 
Jed Herman, Angie Strange, uh, CC by NCSA OpenStax.